Uh, we have a, some, a Fourier series and it's on the interval from negative P to P. If it's a cosine series, so this means it's an even function, right? Uh, then you have two, two different terms, the constant term, which is A naught over two and the cosine terms, okay? So uh, both of them are going from zero to P and it's two over P, right? Two times uh, negative P to P. And if it's an odd function, right? Uh, the first series of an odd function, then you're only gonna have the sine terms, the sine series. So the A naught are going to be zero. And also um, the cosine terms are even functions. You're not gonna add a bunch of even functions to get the odd function. So here you only have sine, okay? So that's the summary of um, Fourier sines and cosine. Now let's do a little practice uh, to help us kind of consolidate the idea. So first of all, we observe that f of x equals to x. This is what a type of what type of function is this? It's an odd function, right? So uh, because the power here is one, right? So that means uh, it's an odd function. So if it's an odd function, um, so first of all, let me clarify. Uh, so if yeah, if I ever give you something to integrate and to expand it as a Fourier series. Um, so if it's a polynomial, you can just directly say, uh, because the power of the polynomial is blah, 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 then you get an even or odd. You don't have to do the f of negative x um, proof of the formal proof of its even or odd function. Um, but if sometimes I give you, for example, e to the negative x or e to the uh, absolute value of x, something that is harder to say, or is not uh, um, strictly a polynomial, then you want to first prove to me whether f of x is an even or odd function by doing the f of negative x equals to either f of x or negative f of x analysis, okay? So in this case, uh, first of all, we'll, we'll write um, this, um, okay, this uh, f of x is a polynomial of power one. So f of x equals to x is an odd function. Okay, so um, then we are going to expand it. Um, so if it's an odd function, what type of terms do we have? We only going to have signs, right? So we, we are only going to have the n sign of and pi over p x and goes from it one to infinity. So that should be how your function looks like. Then we're left to find what bn is. So what is bn? bn would be two over p from zero to p of f of x times sine of n pi over p x dx. Okay, so uh, let's figure this out. Um, so we have um, actually, yeah, so we can use this, this right here. Um, so that's, let's plug in f of x here. Um, this equals to two over p, p is two. Let's just directly plug it in. So p is two, so we have two over two and then zero to two, x times sine of, you have n, pi over two x dx. So here this is, um, so you have x and the sine of x, what, what type of inter integration method are you gonna choose? It's integration by parts, right? So here, let's say u equals to v, uh, sorry, u equals to x and du equals to one, dv equals to sine of, um, m pi over two x, then v is when you integrate this, you get two over m pi. So that flip the constant here. And then you have cosine negative cosine of m pi over two. 
So now let's assemble these up. Uh, so u times v, so it's x times this entire thing, m pi cosine of m pi over 2x from 0 to 2, then minus uh, du times v, so it's um, so let's just move the negative sign together. So it's two over m pi plus m pi over two x integrated from zero to two. Okay, um, so let's say for the first uh, element when you plug in x equals to two, so this cosine becomes two times pi over two times two. So two cancels out, you get x times uh, x of n pi, right? So for x of n pi, um, sometimes you get one, sometimes you get a negative one. So it's um, when x equals to two, you get two times negative two n pi of um, cosine of n pi. And then when x equals to zero for, of course, the entire thing goes to zero, so you don't have to worry. Okay, so the next part will be this. Uh, when you integrate the cosine functions, then this is um, plus, you have two over n pi squared, then sine of n pi over two x evaluated from zero to two, okay? So um, when you have a sign, and then uh, let's just quickly take a look at when you plug in two and zero. So when you plug in two, you get sine of n pi, which is always going to be zero, right? So all, all the multiples of pi, as long as n is integer, then uh, it's always zero. And then when you plug in zero, that's a zero as well. So this part, uh, so this, um, this part is zero always, okay? Um, so now let's take a look at the front. So this part, uh, you get negative four over n pi times cosine of, um, uh, so well, uh, when, when x equals to two, then it's um, two times, yeah, it's, it's that. And then this n pi becomes, when n equals to one, this is negative one. Right, so when n equals one is negative one, when n equals to two, it's positive one. So it's negative one to the power of n. And uh, what you can further do is to just gather the front, the x, uh, the negative one in the front to here, and all together have negative one to the power of n plus one. Okay. So uh, this is the formula. And uh, so in this case, my bx, bn's are all here. Uh, so when you assemble this up, you're just going to replace this bn by this. Okay. So uh, that's what you're gonna do um, to replace this part with um, four over n pi times negative one to the n plus one so with this part. Okay, so now let's um, take a look at the graph here. So we have um, the original graph f of x equals to x from negative two to two. And then after your manipulations, uh, we get all of these sine terms, which are the odd uh, functions as well. And then you will see that it gets repeated again and again. And this point is actually when it starts to uh, have a new period. So all these black dots means that you have a discontinuous point and then you start to repeat this. Um, so this should be how it looks like if you, uh, if you just expand this. Um, but of course, like when you have the Fourier series, you wouldn't have any breaks. Um, so this is all going to be uh, connected by some science functions. So you will see some um, little waves here and then uh, start to connect this point and then start to wave back again. So um, that's the idea. Uh, you can definitely use the code that I gave you last time to check what is the graph look like. 
I think I can quickly show you this. Um, let me go to my quote. Uh, so here I inputted p equals to two, just like what we did from negative two to two, and then y equals to x. Um, okay, let me see. I need to, okay, first of all, let's just take a look at the ANs and BNs and see if it's what we had. Okay, so it's, um, so they outputted two terms, but the sign terms, as we know, all of these are going to be, um, all of these sign terms, so um, all of this um, cosine terms are zero because the ANs are zero and BNs here, if you take a look at this, the sign of n pi, this part, the front part should be zero. And then this next part is exactly what we derived for um, over n, right? The, the pi n gets divided with the pi n and here. And then um, you should have cosine of n pi, which is negative one to the power of x. Um, so when you assemble this up, you, you should only have one part. Um, but let's take a look at the graph by extending a bunch of um, some, some terms here. Let's see. Um, that was only that was only just x getting plotted because I didn't have all these constant terms. So here I had um, the series go to 10 terms. It might take a little bit to run. So you'll see that's how things get um, added. How many terms are these? So seven terms, nine terms, yeah. Okay, so now we can graph it. Yeah, so you see that um, at least this part is follows very nicely with uh, y equals to x. Um, I plotted the entire y equals to, uh, this graph plotted exactly um, y equals to x, uh, that's the entire thing. Uh, but you should just, in this case, well, let's just have it plot um, f of x, y. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, like, I think they should have to be, they should have uh, the same window. Uh, but you can just imagine, like, this is the part that we had. Uh, we don't have x defined elsewhere. So just from negative two to two, so it matches up exactly. But here it, you're not gonna have any holes. Uh, it's all connected. It's all continuous uh, with the sine fu functions. But you see that uh, you only have a bunch of sine terms. There's no constant, no cosine whatsoever. Okay? So that's the um, way that you replicate this little piece and have it repeated over and over again. 